So now we're here at hole three. Um, and one of the key elements on this hole is this waste bunker we're in here, right, that runs along the uh, left side. Right. How are you integrating these into the course? Maybe start with this hole and then we can walk sure, up here a little bit sure. and talk uh, about it. Yeah, so of the sequence of the holes so far, third hole, we have this large waste area. And this material that's in here is, it's not bunker sand, it's just concrete screening. So they take chunks of concrete and grind it up and grind it up till it gets to this point. So it feels and looks like bunker sand, but it's not bunker sand. So the cool element of this, this feature, I think, is that one, it kind of protects or guards this left side of the hole. It sets up the strategy where you want to hit close to it for the best angle of the green. Right. But it's also a functional thing where we can drive through it with golf carts. So the golf cart path back there comes into it, stops. Golf carts can drive through here, stop and get off and play the hole, continue up to the green, and then get on the cart path at the green and go around to the back of the green. So it's kind of a dual purpose type of thing. We've incorporated this feature in different variations, different angles on about uh, six of the golf holes within the within the you know the entire 18 hole golf. And course. is this something that's more of a traditional design, or where did kind of this concept come from? Um, I don't know. It's something that you see a lot in Florida. Um, okay. I don't know if it's traditional. Or not. I think from an aesthetic standpoint, it looks traditional because again, we got that grass face with the flat floor, but it's not traditional in the sense of what you would see in classic architecture, but. It, to me, it's just another element that creates, you know, character interest, the contrast of this material against the grass. Right, and then you got the water over right, here, right, so right. it does. Yeah. Yep. Visually, it's really cool. All right, well, why don't we head up to the green? We can talk about that a little bit. All right, so now we're heading up to the green here on hole three, which I believe you called a Brits design, correct? Yeah, yep, yep. And, and where is that from? Uh, the original Brits, my understanding, came from somewhere in France, um, but it's, it's again a template hole that's been used within golf architecture for a long time. There's also a really good example at Yale uh, Golf Club up in um, uh, Connecticut. Um, but the concept is where there's a deep trough that kind of bisects the green, and it typically bisects it uh, you know, perpendicular to the line of play. This green is kind of set at an angle, but again, if you look, there's a trough that kind of that runs through the middle of the green. Um, and the, the neat thing about this feature is that it really makes the green interesting as far as the premium of being in the right location of the green on your approach shot or your recovery shot. Because, for example, if the pin is in the back and you're mm -hmm. in the front, you got to putt through that trough and it's hard to gauge. So the green is very dynamic. Uh, again, we can put pins in the front, the back. Also, we can put pins in the bottom of this trough. Again, it just makes it really dynamic and unique and something that I think people will talk about as they walk away from the green. So you can really have, I mean, three, four different ways you're playing this on any given day. Right, yep, depending on where the pin is, exactly. Like if the pin's in the front where you're bouncing it in, the pin's back here, I think you're trying to hit it into the trough and let it trickle you know, back onto the, uh, this back plateau. Gotcha. All right, let's hit uh, hole number four. Okay. 